Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the problem D from code forces round 661. Problem name binary string to subsequence. So you are given a binary string S of length n and what you have to do here is you have to divide the string into minimum number of subsequence such that each character of the subsequence is of the form of 0101 or 1010. So you are given such that you are given a string and you have to divide it into as few number of subsequence such that all subsequence has this type of pattern. Okay, so now you can take out the subsequence and you have to print out like which character belongs to which subsequence such that as you can take as you can see 1 1 this means that the first and last character belong to one subsequence and the second second means that these two characters belong to the one subsequence. So now if you take this, this is 0 1 and this is 0 1 which is of this pattern. In this as you can see because there is no 0 1 you can only take 1 1 1 1 and there are 6 subsequences. In this because there is 0 1 0 1 0 1 only one subsequence is required. So this is in the total number of subsequence you have to like you can maximum or the sorry the minimum number of subsequence you can take out and this is the indexes or which tells us this character belong to which subsequence okay so i hope you understand the question first to solve this you can first move down to drawing board to understand how you can solve this okay so let's assume that you have 0 0 1 1 okay if you take this 0 as an initial point of one subsequence then you require another one and then you require a zero but there is no zero so then this is this will form one component now again you will form this zero and you will form out one one so what does this means that you will require what are the zeros there for every zero you can append one the next one to it whenever you find a zero then when you move from left to right you will form you will find one another one you can append to it if you find the same for one you can append a zero to it but if you find a one and there is another one you cannot append to it so you have to form two components here so you have to keep track of the components so what you can do you can form two stacks here one is s0 stack for zero and stack for one this means that the we will store in this the actually component number or a, i'm ta talking about the subsequence as the component but you can also talk about like the subsequence number okay so let's assume that we are taking this only example for more illustration so we will take zero now we are on zero so we can append this on any component which has one on it so we will search in this stack whether there is some component which has ending at one no because this stack is empty so now the total component size like the total number of components we will initialize as like one because this is the first component so what we will do because now this is a one component this is prescribing as one component only zero we will in send the component number which is one in this stack of zero which means there is one component which has a number of like which has the id of one and there is one component which has ending of zero okay now we they will again find zero we will first for zero we will find out whether there is some component ending at one because we can append the zero at that component but we find that there is no component ending at one so we will put this we will increment our co components number because now there are two components and we will insert this component number in this stack now we will on one we will check that for one we can append this one to any component which has an ending of zero so we will check that in this zero stack whether there is some component ending at zero yes there is a stack which has an id of two which will end at like which will end at zero so what we can do here is because now there is one component which is ending at zero we are appending this one to this so now the component is ending at one now 
it is not ending at zero. The ID of this is two. The ID of this component is two, but it is not ending at zero. It is ending at one now. So we will pop out this component from here and put this ID to here, which tells that there is one component ending at one now, which has an ID of two. So this will actually help us to track how many components are there because that's what we want. And same what we will do, we will save the component number or component ID for the every character because for zero it is one, for it is two. Now for one, we'll check that the number we have popped out, the number we have popped out is two. So that's the component ID for this. Because we are appending this one to a component which has the ID of two. Same we'll do for one again. We will check that we can make one as an individual component, but we can also do that. We can append this one a to another component, which is ending at zero. So whether there is another component ending at zero, we will check in this stack. This stack has one, one element down here, which tells us that there is one component ending at one. So what is the idea of this component one? So what we can do, we can take this component one, which has the ID one. And what we'll do, we'll append at this one a zero. Now this component end at zero. Oh, sorry, actually it has one. So uh, like there's a component zero, which we will append one to it. So now this component has the ending of one now. So what we'll do, we will take this component ID and put it here. And that's it will end. So the total number of components we have seen is equal to this. Okay. And how many, what is the ID for every component we have stored in this? As you can see, so that's the whole trick for this question. I'll just move on to the code part to make it more clear. So we will make two stacks stack for zero and like one and zero and the answer vector numpy is initialized to one because there is one component in the start. Then what we will do, we will first see that there is zero. When we first found a zero there, then we have two options, whether the whether we can append this zero on a component which is already present and which has one at the end. So what we'll do, we'll check that in the one stack, whether it is empty or not. If it is not empty, what we'll take is we will pop out the top element from this stack of one, pop out this element and append this zero at the end of this component such that we will take out this component ID and store it in the AFI. And now because it is appended zero at the end, we'll push back this whole component ID in S of zero. But if the S of zero component or like the stack is empty, what we will do, we will append this numpy because numpy is the total number of, uh, total number of piles we have. Okay. So what we'll do because now we have to make a new pile. So we will make a new pile in this stack. AFI is the new pile and we'll increment a new pile. Same will do for one else as well. So this is this is the same code. This is for one and this is for like this is for zero and this is for one. After that, the total number of piles is one minus num i minus one because we have taken the num from z like one. You can initialize it zero, then you can take it as num pile. And then we will just iterate over the whole a vector and store or like the output this a vector. I hope you understand the code as well as the logic. If you still have any doubts, please mention down. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding. Bye.